Yeah, it's me. I know, it's been way too long since I made a video, but I think I've gotten past some of the technical difficulties that were holding me up. I've also gotten pretty tired of making all of my arguments in comment sections. My apologies and my thanks to all the people who've been bugging me to make more videos. There are several topics I'd like to cover, so hopefully I'll be uploading more soon. And just a heads up to my subscribers, some of those will be about this eruption of flat earth nonsense on YouTube over the last year or so. I'll put flat earth in each title so that you can skip those if you're not interested. Some people on both sides of this issue have criticized me for picking on small potatoes, amateur YouTube hoax believers like these. Well, there are two reasons for that. First, because I'm a small potatoes amateur YouTube Apollo defender myself. Secondly, because there really aren't many legitimately credentialed, scholastically respected hoax believers. There are a couple, though, and this video is about a claim made by one of them. He is Colin Rourke, Ph.D., a university professor of mathematics. Probably not an extra bright kid from the slums, as Ralph René described himself, but someone who has proven his intellectual worth through a gauntlet of rigorous and academically demanding requirements. One of his claims is about the alleged lack of a time delay in communications between Apollo astronauts on the moon and Houston. First, a little background on this for those who may not be familiar with it. Radio waves travel at the speed of light. It takes 1.3 seconds for a radio transmission to get from the Earth to the Moon, and vice versa. So, when someone at Mission Control says something to the astronauts on the Moon, we shouldn't hear a reply from them for at least 2.6 seconds. With that in mind, watch and listen to this clip of the Apollo 11 landing. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control, both auto descent, engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Here's a graphic of the dialogue. Notice that it's only one second, or a little less, between Charlie saying Eagle and Neil saying Houston. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh... Therefore, this is proof that Apollo was fake, or so Colin Rourke and other hoax believers think. We have to remember that the audio recording we're listening to was made at Mission Control in Houston. So, we're hearing what they hear. It takes 1.3 seconds for Charlie's statement to be heard by Neil, though. So, let's adjust by 1.3 seconds and listen to what Neil hears, the way it would sound if it had been recorded at his end. We copy you down, Eagle. Uh, Tranquility Base here. So, Neil wasn't responding to Charlie. He was all geared up for what he knew would be one of the most monumental public announcements in the history of mankind. He didn't need any prompting. He knew he had landed on the moon, but Charlie butted in. Hey, I'm not trashing Charlie. He's probably my favorite Apollo astronaut. He just got carried away with the moment. His excitement and relief are understandable, considering this was the first manned landing on the moon, there had been three computer alarms during descent, and he knew that Eagle had less than 20 seconds of fuel remaining. He forgot that this was supposed to be Neil's great moment. Neil stopped himself when he heard Charlie talking, waited for a couple of seconds to see if there was any more, and then continued with his announcement. 
There are hoax believers who think there should be a time delay between hearing the astronauts speak and hearing Houston reply. The Eagle has landed. Roger, twang, tranquility. No, there shouldn't, since we're hearing these communications as Houston hears them. So there is no time delay between when we hear astronauts speaking and Houston replying, but there is at least a 2.6 second delay between Houston speaking and when we hear astronauts replying. Anytime you hear less than that, the astronaut isn't replying to the last part of what Houston said. He hasn't heard anything that we hear Houston saying for at least 1.3 seconds prior to when we hear the astronaut talking. Now, about three years ago, when I first got the idea of making this video, I had a short series of cordial email exchanges with Dr. Rourke, in which I discussed this with him and gave him my explanation. Out of respect for his academic status, I wanted him to have a chance to rethink his position. He did not accept my explanation and politely terminated the correspondence. I don't know if his opinion has changed since then, but it really doesn't matter as far as YouTubers are concerned, since they are continuing to make the same argument. Hopefully, Dr. Rourke will find his way back to reason. Look at these people. You may recognize some of them. I could have included several more, but this is enough to make the point. With one exception, all of them legitimately earned the title of doctor either academic or medical. Alfred Russell Wallace was given an honorary doctorate because of his valuable contributions to evolutionary biology, a science which didn't even have degrees in those days. There is one other thing they all had in common. At some point in their careers, they abandoned all the intellectual discipline which earned them their professional reputations and uncritically wandered off into some woo-woo nonsense or another. Many of them are now known more for those crackpot involvements than for their mainstream contributions and service. They all fell for some irrational belief and advocated it, tragically tarnishing their legacies and providing confidence and inspiration to aspiring crackpots everywhere. What happens when good minds go bad? I think it's because they all believed they were going to be leaders in some new area of science, establish a whole new paradigm, or expose some conspiracy. They were all wrong. While academic and professional credentials do indicate intelligence and superior knowledge in a particular subject, they apparently do not provide complete immunity from irrational, absurd beliefs. Nor do these impressive credentials guarantee intellectual integrity. In my last couple of Apollo videos, I introduced a contest feature. The last one was so long ago, I can't remember who the winners were. Sorry, but here's the contest question for this video. You may remember me saying all but one of these people had the title of doctor. Not only was one of them without any advanced degrees, but this person had no degrees at all in the field he or she claimed academic expertise. Yet this person has sold millions of books worldwide under false credentials like Bill Casing and Ralph Rene did. Send me a PM identifying the number of that person's picture and giving his or her name. The first to get the correct answer will be announced in my next video. Thanks for watching and hopefully it won't be more than a week or so before I upload my next video. Bye. It's been a long, long time. Long, long. Time.